Attention passengers, this is the last boarding call for flight 225 to Honolulu. Repeat, this is the last call for flight 225 to Honolulu. Passengers are advised to board immediately. Hello and welcome there skill modelers to my small hobby YouTube channel. My name is Tomo and today we're going to be taking a look at some passenger airliners. On this channel I have covered many many kits over the two years that I've been doing this and I don't think that I've actually ever tackled passenger aircraft. Maybe this is because I have never actually built a passenger aircraft before but this just might change in the future. But because I didn't want to review just one because basically you guys like to see many many kits I decided to review several so in today's picking I have chosen six aircraft the De Havilland Comet 4B in 144 scale and the Dakota Douglas Mark III Ilyushin 62M in 144 scale the Concorde in 144 scale the Airbus A380-800 in 144th scale and last but not least in 144th scale the Boeing 777-300ER so enjoy the video behold how are we gonna tackle this today well I'm gonna go alphabetically uh, to make life easier for you guys I will uh, put timestamps at the end of this intro so you'll see when certain airplanes are going to be reviewed so you don't have to go through all the video okay so let's begin and we will start with the smallest airfix airplane here the de Havilland Comet 4B it is a model kit 04176 uh, 144 scale and it costs around 18 and a half euros here in the store well it actually costs 18 and a half euros here in Slovenia but you know if you get it cheaper good for you this is how it looks on all the sides you can see that the different types of markings for the airplane it's a level 2 skill set so it's basically not that hard to put together and yeah airfix very bright shiny box let's open it up all the sprues are in this uh, big bag well big for the box anyway and I don't particularly like this uh, layout because you know some things have already been broken uh, it's just tossed in here it's like this um, but you know it is what it is, so uh, let's take a look at this inside the bag. Okay, the carnage out of the bag. So we've got just everything thrown inside the bag and it's not really good because you see that, you know, stuff starts breaking off and already here we have damage. Well, damage. The, the little sprue thing broke away and left this horrible seam. Actually, horrible stub, not seam. And the attachment points are horrendous. Look at that. You'll probably need a saw or a very sharp side cutter to make this work on the bottom is also bad see the attachment point is really thick so you have to be mindful if you want to make this a good airplane you got the cutouts for the back door and the front door and you got the cutouts see here they were just been lying in the bag so yeah that's and the reason that you have the cutouts made because you can actually uh, put some um, steps near the airplane so like you know passengers are coming on and off the airplane but you can also see that there's a lot of flash around I mean there is surface detail here you can feel this this is like uh, raised detail so that's cool uh, the bottom and uh, top wing surfaces are okay ish this is an old kit so uh, just be mindful of that uh, the attachment points here are also very bad especially here on the control surfaces you'll need to cut it and then sand it and make it good and you can see on the edges there's like a ton of crap here so, yeah. and we got the little sprue that has everything else so see this is already kind of coming loose we got the steps the wheels and um, all other smaller pieces actually this is the bulkhead that's it's pretty cool if it wouldn't be so crappy but you know the attachment points here are the same story not particularly good see the flash is horrendous on the landing gear is just awful that's just like look at that that's just awful I mean but that's like old okay so I'm just gonna break off this because it's no useless it's useless and see here oh my god I've just noticed this see oh my god the injector pins holy crap 
sand down putty oh, okay so there is work to be done here on this little kit as far as the clear parts are concerned they're just basically what they're just one and that's the front windows I don't take it out of the bag but it's nothing impressive the decal sheet is nice and big it has nice sharp printed decals as you, as you can see it's much better than the whole airplane <laughs> so it's got that working for it the instruction sheet is very small on the back you see the markings and the colors that you need to paint it in and of course it's pretty rudimentary so to start with the words and we got this and we got this and of course the painting so that's it next up is the Douglas Dakota Mark III in 172nd scale. Uh, it's a model number 08015A and it costs 40 euros or you know more or less depending of course where you buy it. It has a bigger box, it's a newer kit. It's nice and shiny and red on the back side there's basically nothing. So uh, let's uh, open this baby up. Just like the previous one here as well we have every single thing in one big bag I mean this is probably Airfix is standard um, good or bad like I said it depends on the person I don't particularly like that but then again you know it's more ecological because there's less plastic which is a very kind of funny statement because this is all plastic anyway but you get the idea so let's open this bag up and look at the screws real quick I'll just give you a quick glance of all the sprues, little fine details. For the most part, the plastic is pretty solid. It's pretty cool. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Um, the mold themselves are pretty sharp since this is a fairly new model. This is something to be expected. We do also have two pilots here, which <laughs> are pretty cool, but I think they're twins because the expression on their faces and their posture dictates that they're basically one and the same. See, by, by the way it's packed, some of these antennas might be a little brittle, uh, exposed. This one is already bent, so that's not a good thing. The main body of the aircraft is beautiful. We have nicely uh, presented panel lines. So this is just gonna be like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They're really um, pronounced, so that's really cool. Uh, the, the floors for the interior, because you have the interior, of course, for this aircraft. The wing, and the, surf the wing surfaces. The mounting points here, it, they're still a little bit too thick in my opinion. I mean, look at that, on the wing surfaces, especially here. I mean, here on the bottom, where the little hatch panel is supposed to be, when you cut this out, you might damage the edge. So, you know, certain things Airfix still needs to work on. And we have the last, actually the second to last big sprue, which is the other half of the fuselage. See the interior got uh, the injector mold pin marks here, which again, it, it kinda, it's kinda crappy the way they're done like this. Because you have like this beautiful detail, it's raised detail, and then you're supposed to do what? Put putty inside and fix this? Uh, it's just a little bit of a um, disconcerting, uh, in my opinion. But you know, it is what it is. See, it's already broken here from the attachment point. But the surfaces are go but the surfaces are okay. They're, they're actually very good. And of course, the last is the top wing section huge nice big wings it's really uh, a joy to work on a bigger model because there are just so much detail you can see that you cannot see on a much smaller model clear parts there are much more of them here than in the previous airfix kit but this is you know uh, typical because there's more stuff here we got the windows we got the cockpit and we got these lights and the spotlight as well um, to be honest it, it's nothing revolutionary. It's clear. It doesn't seem that foggy. Even if I take you close, it doesn't seem that foggy. But then again, it's still inside the bag. I think they're just good. 
nice, shiny, well-printed decals. Beautiful. Even the smallest detail, if I take it closer, you can see the cockpit, the little text, which uh, represents warnings on the aircraft, which is pretty cool. They are nicely printed, I mean, I must admit that. So the manual is much more substantial than the previous kit, it's understandable since we have bigger aircraft and more parts, but it's very nicely laid out and I do like their presentation in the no newer kits because it's, it's computer generated but it's uh, well generated. I really enjoyed the manuals um, from Airfix. The other thing that you get is this little fold out uh, piece of paper, glossy paper, that shows you exactly the paint scheme that you need to apply to the aircraft to make it um, the way it's supposed to be. So we got this little uh, Dakota Douglas Mark III Middle East Communication Squadron, or we got the other one, which is more of a military version, depending on which one you go. Personally, I do like the civilian better than here on this little uh, Air Force, mm, but to each his own. If I would build it, I would probably pick this one because it just looked better. And we are already at the ICM model, number 14405, which is the ICM Soviet passenger aircraft Ilyushin-62M in 144 scale. This is a pretty cool model. Um, because Soviets really built cool, big, massive Russian planes, you know. And just looking at the box art itself, it's pretty cool. Like these two, the, the Haviland and the Kodan on the back side, also had a very good uh, box art, but this just looks more prominent. So it comes in this little box. It has uh, like the side profile, and you see that it's so tail heavy, have to have the special wheel. <laughs> and in the back there's nothing. So let's open this one up as well. One thing that I would like to point out is that the these ICM kits always usually come in a very thick cardboard box that opens up this way. So look at that. Woo! Just like with the other two kits, this also comes in one big bag, but it's for your convenience, just slightly glued, so you don't need to faff around with the knife. Okay, so the main business of the airplane is, of course, in this big ass screw, and I have to kind of hold it like this, so you can see the whole majesty of it. Um, the detail and the plastic is awesome. It doesn't look cheap, it doesn't feel cheap, it's well laid out, and actually, look at that. If you take it closer, you will see that the actual cast is pretty damn good edges are nice and clean the attachment points are small it's not that thick like airfix does pretty good here we go we got this little ukrainian company making incredible incredible pieces of just engineered plastic it has nice detail you can see the body you closer so the body of the aircraft see we've got oh we got nice little panel lines there they're not as pronounced as on airfix they're much more shallow but I think it kind of it kind of makes it more logical because it's a smaller scale aircraft then we have these two wing sections nice really nice take it close see the control surface is it's really just nice and smooth and straight not bent the attachment points are not that big I really like this this aircraft is the best so far that I've seen the one good and neat thing about this kit is that you have a stand for it and it's in a clear part sprue and this is really cool I really love this uh, idea because you can display this aircraft as in flight so you don't have to put it on uh, you know uh, landing gear and it's, I wish that other manufacturers would apply this to their models. I really like this thing. 
and it's clear so it doesn't intrude with the model if you want you can paint it but it, I wouldn't and also ICM has one of the most beautiful clear parts through that you will ever see they're just so clear even from the bag I mean the bag is also clear but the whole thing you can see that it's just shiny it's really nice you don't even have to dip it in any lacquer you know it's just beautiful so yay being a Soviet aircraft you of course have Soviet markings and of course in the Russian markings as well really sharp and these are no exception so you will not be disappointed with this little kit um, black and red <laughs> they're typical manual and they're a big fan of model master so if you have model master colors you'll be good to go finally something for the Ravel fans I know you you've been waiting for this one so here we have the Concorde in 144 scale uh, model number 04257 this thing has been reissued this year I believe don't hold me to that uh, it's not that expensive like you see 20 euros not that big of a deal and the box art itself is not that great um, it's just basically a picture of your actual thing it's okay but it could be more like a new type of you know computer generated you got the new markings here and you got the pictures here as reference so you can see how the actual aircraft looks uh, it's a typical Revell box. Let's see. Let's open her up. Yet again, we are greeted with one bag, which is just uh, filled with sprues. And right off the bat, I can tell you that this is not nearly as beautiful as the previous kit, because already I can see crap. So let's just open it up. Like I've mentioned, this is an older kit. It's a reboxed older kit, and it does show. Oh my god, look at that. This is just horrendous. Look at this cuffing my god what happened here this is just horrible mmm person who's gonna buy this is not gonna be happy especially look at those the exhausts and the f flares on each and every single piece I mean Ravel come on what is going on with you I mean some other pieces are okay these these are this side seems to be okay but this is just what happened here maybe this is just like a failed one and we just got it unfortunately but oh god um, as far as detail is concerned I it's reasonable for the era it's reasonable the detail is okay I mean these actually don't look that horrible but again this is just so bad look at that here we have the long body it's really really long Concord is just like big a big tubular structure and looking at it up close you can see how the crap man inside you you have no detail because there's no need to be but it there is a very sexy injector pin mold mark right in the fuselage just right here look at that see awesome on the outside so that is sucky and there's one here as well yeah I mean if you are nostalgic for a Concorde and if you have no other choices to buy then to buy this one go ahead but you know otherwise just wait until somebody else makes one oh my god look at that that's even bad it's right on the windows I mean that is just crap I mean you, you can fix this but it just takes so much time Wing surfaces, yes, uh, has um, two wings as you can see at the bottom and the top. Uh, you see the, the marks, see 1991. Oh lord, it's an old one. But for an old model kit, I must say, you see the attachment points here and here are not that bad. They could be better, but they're not that bad for an old kit. But here, yeah, this is, this is just. Uh, clear parts they didn't even bother putting in a separate bag they just said well the hell with it we'll just put it everything in one big box and uh, it's not clear look at that it's pretty nasty it's cuffed up you can polish this thing out probably but it's not that good the decals huh boys and girls look at that pretty substantial wouldn't you say 
We got both types of British Airways signatures and the decals are pretty cool. They're really very well printed. Look at that. You can see even the smallest, smallest text. So that is very good. It's pretty cool. Sorry for the out of focus. Let me just put you back on track. Ah, the Ravel manual, the typical black and white Ravel manual. There she blows. And now we are coming to the pride and joy of uh, Ravel, and this is their uh, British Airways A380-800 Airbus. Oh yes, this is a big box, level 4. All the other kits were basically equivalent of level 3, so fairly straightforward and simple. This one is a level 4. Uh, which means lots more parts and um, more detail, hopefully. Uh, it is a 144 scale model and the box is huge. It's a 144, but it's really big. It goes for like 35 euros. Uh, it's a model number 03922. And um, beautiful box art. We got some on the side, the pictures and the sprues. And yeah, let's... Uh, open it up okay so the airplanes profile is huge it is nice firm plastic uh, this one is I think made in 2000 well at least the mold I think it's made 2002 yeah like that uh, and uh, it's just nice it has nice panel lines you can see they're a little shiny here and there take it closer to give you just a little close-up I mean the other half is the same just you know Similar, actually, not the same. See, we have the cargo doors, car cargo doors here. And when I was working as an aircraft technician, I was in here for a long time, working on the cargo compartment, but not on the A3800, on the smaller one. Anyway, um, yeah, look at that. The wing surface. There is a little bit of flash here. That's okay. Then we come to a bunch of smaller sprues, uh, which are just the um, exterior pieces that go everywhere. See the landing here. I think these are the brakes, I believe. Well, anyway, they are part of the landing gear anyway. And we have the um, motor housing and the housing for the gears, the fairings. I've got another set of ta wheels, wheels, wheels. There are just a ton of them. Pretty cool. Uh, the plastic is really good. The attachment points could be a little better on certain parts but uh, I don't have any complaints and as far as a Ravel kit goes this I wow this might be the nicest one I've seen so far something not certainly not something this big uh, we got the little fans here the blades pretty cool pretty cool it's really really um, actually it's really a nice mold really good here we have some nice detail inside pretty good it's a very very nice kit the cockpit I think I've already shown you this because uh, yeah but I want to show you the cockpit real quick it's really good look at that this being an a380 800 uh, is just the, the wing surfaces are huge look at that my hand doesn't really cover it and my hand is big so uh, wow yeah just like all the other pieces that we've seen so far here on this little screw, it doesn't disappoint. The attachment points are nice and you know, small. There's a flash here and there, you know, some quality issues, but really nothing bad so far. Um, maybe these attachment points might be a little bit more um, problematic, but if you use a saw, a thin saw here and here, or maybe, yeah, probably a saw. This will go out pretty cool, but it's just a well-designed uh, aircraft. Clear parts are very minuscule. Basically, you just have the you know the outside windows of the cockpit, and I think some uh, indication on for the for the wings. I do believe some lights, but other than that, it's not really much. Uh, they're not as good as on ICM, but they're okay. 
Holy smokes, if you thought that the Concorde decal sheet was big, look at this one. This is huge! An A4 paper for comparison, and it sticks out quite some way. Look at that. Anyway, the quality. modern aircraft manual with full color. I really love manuals. These newer Revell manuals are the best manuals I've ever seen. They're nice and shiny and glossy and it's like super cool. Let's go to the next one. This is the newest and latest and greatest Revell passenger airliner. Uh, level 4 in 144 scale, the Boeing 777-300ER, which is trademarked, oh yeah. It is not expensive, it's like 28 euros, so wow, you know, beautiful box art, it's blue and white, it's just gorgeous. And the box is basically the same uh, length as the previous Airbus's one, so I'm guessing that the parts inside will be similarly placed. It is in the new black and gray design, not like the previous ones, which are the you know blue and stripy Revell boxes. These are much better boxes. So yeah, let us open the box. So got clears here. Okay, let's take a look at the sprues. Um, plastic here is a little bit on the thin side. I must admit, it's a little bit thin. Maybe they're just kind of chipping out on the plastic, but it's thin. However, it is thin, but the quality is superb. At least from what I can see close up here, the quality on this thing is absolutely fantastic. I would have never said that this is a Revell kit if I wouldn't see it from my own eyes. Even the blades here are just gorgeous. Aside, they are thin. They're gorgeous. I'll take you closer inside so you can see the little wheels. And the wheels have threads. Let me just show you. The wheels are, are threaded. I hope you can see it, but there are threads on the wheels. Uh, here, it's better, better seen with that. They're threaded. So let me take it closer. You can see the little details on the wings and the control surfaces. So yeah, I have the panel lines. They're shallow, but they're good. This Boeing is absolutely beautiful. Let's see the gnome cones, and even the nose comb have that. Even the nose comb here. See, this is raised detail all around. It's beautiful. Then we have the two massive wing sections, upper and the lower, and it's textured. They're textured, so if I take it closer, uh, we have some details, nice detail. And if you go with a finger like this, you can feel the texture. It's nice and scratchy. It's not glossy, it's matte. It's a much better finish than on the uh, British Airways one. I like this. I like this a lot. The 777-300, it's a long, long, it's so long. Oh my god, it's still going. Pretty a long piece of tubal, tubular design, man. The texture on the surface is the same as on the wings. It's scratchy, matte finish, beautiful, no flash. I mean, absolute, I have yet seen, I mean, there are maybe just tiny, tiny little things, but that's nothing. That's like almost Tamiya style quality. Hopefully, hopefully there are no fit issues. And yeah, look at that, even on the surface, you have this little um, rain gutters, raised detail, wow, beautiful. Cargo compartment, beautiful. It's just fana fantastic. Guys, this is my new favorite one. I, I wasn't that sold on passenger airlines, but the Illusion uh, from ICM and this little Revell 
uh, Boeing's 777-300ER is just fantastic. I mean, wow, I just, just kind of wants me to get the glue out and just start building it. So, wow, I just want to see them. Oh yeah, this is, this is better. This is much better. And the plastic here, these are very flexible. Look at that, look at that. This is a very flexible, clear plastic. I've actually never seen this before. It's almost like a rubber, but it's not super fine. That is really cool. Really cool. That's, that's really cool. Really cool. Decals. Oh my God. These are so beautiful. So shiny. Much better than on the previous one. There are, of course, a few of them. However, they are just gorgeous. There's a little bit of a boo here. There's like green stuff here. That's probably something from the print. Ah, but anyway, I'll give you some close-up shots. The doors, the little small decals here. Some text you can't read, but most of them you can. Like this on the rings, I think you can just barely read. Yeah, if I use a magnifying glass, I would probably make out some of the text, not all. But they're beautiful. Nice and shiny. Super nice. Super, super nice. And the manual, beautiful, gorgeous, uh, colored manual with the actual aircraft as this is built on the front. Back to the studio. Although I might criticize some of the kids from being kind of poor, I do kind of have this nostalgic feel when I was a kind of kid and those kind of kits were a staple in my build arsenal. So with that in mind, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you so much for watching if you have been. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing and I'll see you again soon in the next one. Bye bye.